again, kind of like before, like the night before, we ate before we um, worked out, and we ate pretty heavy breakfast. Yeah, um, actually, probably heavier than I normally do, but for whatever reason, I was hungry. And I know Garrett likes to eat a lot, so I'm I like, oh, I'll just eat. I'll just make a lot, and then we'll eat a lot. That's yeah. fine. And now it's at the point, even after the workout, where I'm not hungry. But I still want to eat. Almost, a, <laughs> almost like a habitual thing, and so yeah. many people can relate to that. Sometimes people just eat because it's a yeah, habit. It's a habit, and mm-hmm. it's like oh, I want to eat right now, but I don't feel like I need to eat. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, it was big. It was a really big pre-workout meal this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, we didn't do something super cardio heavy because that would not right. have sat well. Yes. Yeah, so, so it was. Well, yeah, you had seasoned beef, well, eggs. Well, it was just ground beef, eggs, and I put salt and pepper on those. And then we had some turkey bacon. Mm, but a lot of it. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> if you had to guess the ounces in just the bowl that we both had how many of beef and eggs, how much was that? Well, so I cooked a full pound of beef, so that's probably a half pound each. Yeah. And then it was nine eggs total, so that's four and a half eggs oh, wow. a piece. <laughs> and then we each had a package of turkey bacon. Which I think is eight <laughs> ounces or something. Yeah, wow. So it was a lot. It was a lot of meat. It was a lot. A lot of meat. Uh. <laughs> yeah, Garrett's a growing boy, so I want That's to right. make sure he had plenty of food to 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 grow. Yeah, I gotta catch up to this guy. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we ate all that food. So then, how did you do? And I actually asked you this question. Yeah. Right. So I was asking you about uh, how many units would you give. For a meal like this and and so how how did you answer that yeah so so for usually nor sometimes i eat that full meal if i'm super hungry in the morning um, but oftentimes i don't so oftentimes i just have that um, beef and eggs and then separately i'll have the turkey bacon so when i think about it i think about it in those two things so with the eggs and beef, I usually need to boil us about two units for those. And then also for the turkey bacon, I usually need to boil us two units for that. Now, depending on your body, yeah. um, and, you know that may be different. Plus, at the same time, how you then dose that may need to be different as well. Because um, with, with meat and fat, and we talked a lot about that too as far as mm-hmm. fat content yeah. and the type of meat and how that affects when the blood sugar ends up spiking or coming up um, or not. And so, and that ultimately really does depend on the person yeah. because um, everybody's digestive system is going to be different and absorption is going to be different. Right. Um, so that that's something you have to tease out for yourself and just kind of experiment and narrow in on. But for me, and it kind of changes between people too because when I initially started like a carnivore primary diet, which has been like since November last year. It's so like five months. Yeah, probably. Okay. And um, when I first started that, it was much more like a slow reaction to where like I wouldn't bullish right away for it. I would wait maybe like 30 minutes, maybe an hour, and, and then bullish because that spike would have to happen much later. So if I would bullish at the time of the meal, I would actually drop low and then I would drink a juice box or something and then I'd start spiking really high. So, um, so you have to kind of time it right as well um, when you start eating those low carbs and dealing with more protein content or fat content and seeing how your body responds to those things. Yeah. So, and we even, there's not even a whole lot of, not even just clinical practice information out there. The biggest thing, and I will continue to echo as, as you just did, so depends on your body. Uh, so unique. But, uh, you know, there's no real data out there about bolusing for protein i think there is now i think i've seen a pubmed and published literature that it is recognized that protein will raise blood sugar in type 1 diabetics Mm -hmm. but they don't know how to clinically really you you what to do with that information yeah um and i'm you know i think it's a combination of those two things but said in a different way is the amino acid profile in the meats and proteins you're eating plus the digestion rate which isn't heavily impacted by the co- the amount of protein plus the amount of fat. Yeah. Then you throw your physiology. Then you throw your stress in there. Mm-hmm. Then you throw in, oh, you don't have a gallbladder. Then yeah. you throw in, uh, you know, all these other things about it that changes the equation way more than just, oh, 
15 units of, of carbohydrates is one one unit of insulin. Yeah, that's exactly. all you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> so said differently, you know, that's some of the things you need to think about. So you had, how did you end up bolusing then for you? Because I, I bet hearing what your thoughts were and having that thought process in my head, I definitely took a different strategy than you. Yeah. So how did you end up bolusing for the meal? Yeah. So like I said before, when I first started, I used to have to do a bigger delay. Now, most of the times I just take it right when I eat the meal because it does gradually come up like you would normally see in a carbohydrate laden meal. And so so I ended up taking it after the meal. And But I took a little bit less because I knew we were about to go work out. So I knew my insulin sensitivity was going to jump up while at the same time my insulin was going to be starting to activate in my system. Ah. And so I took a little bit less, which was a good thing because ultimately by the time we got done warming up, it was already starting to drop a little bit. And I think that had a lot to do more so with the workout that we did last night than me bolusing too much for the meal. Yeah. Um, because I think my insulin sensitivity just jumped way up from having that high intensity workout because I don't do those high intensity workouts, or I haven't been doing those high intensity workouts um, for a long time now. So mm-hmm. having that big hit to my system um, last night I think really affected my insulin sensitivity into today and this morning so um, ultimately I didn't need to take that much much insulin Mm. today yeah I think your latter assessment is is definitely more accurate to have change insulin sensitivity while after a meal that's affecting your insulin dosage that seems pretty that seems hard to guess or even to even recognize when that change overnight is probably more true, right? Well, like when I do eat before workouts normally, like normally I take less because ultimately if I don't take less, I will drop low almost right right, right away. It's not insulin sensitivity more. Well, well you're bringing more sugar into the cells because mm-hmm. you're exercising. So mm-hmm. it's not necessarily insulin sensitivity i guess it's more so right. you're u- utilizing more sugar sure. and therefore you don't need as much insulin. yeah there's more glute for translocation yeah. and all that kind of stuff yeah uh where so you had that you explained what your thoughts were going into it for the workout where i heard that i'm not <laughs> as i've said in another episode my, my my nutrition is kind of all over the place in terms of what i'm eating what i'm not i mean sometimes i'm do, end up doing bouts of fasting just because it's like i'm not stressed well i'm stressed but it's more i need to use my time for the work i'm doing mm-hmm. for that work in and other projects and so i have high carb days i have medium carb days ba- higher protein in there you know whatever so sometimes fasting i think i had it for a snack i had a pound of sausage one day like this week like you know i'm literally all over the place yeah so i heard your assessment of what your current status is of carnivore and so what I, I did a square bolus with this with an insulin pump, uh, with a Medtronic insulin pump, and so I took the dosage of what would be worth thirty five ish carbs, and I did like three point five ish units for that big meal of all all the that beef, eggs, and, and turkey bacon, and I squared it over an hour and a half. I didn't duel it. I didn't give myself any then. I just said that amount of insulin over a period of time. And I was like 150, and then I stayed at 150 for a while, and then I kind of head down to 130 pretty much throughout the whole workout. And then after the workout, then I'm kind of started trending down towards the 80s. Um, so I didn't need any juice boxes during the workout. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I didn't need any of that kind of stuff. I just, I just did it. I didn't change my basal rates during the the workout. I didn't do change the basal rate before or afterwards. It was just that one square bolus, and with a high protein. You know, higher fat meal like that, that ended up working out real well. Yeah. So 